Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday, July 28th, 2024. It's about noon, straight up noon here along the West Coast in California. Latest activity shows a 2.8 earthquake here up in the uh, extreme northeast of the states. Also a 0.9 little small microquake there across the uh, California area. We'll get to the earthquake activity here in just a little bit. want to chat about a cannibal CME headed our direction here. Basically, it's a combination here of two decent CMEs that were blasted off the sun here recently in the yellow. There's one, two. Got two decent CMEs uh, headed off in the Earth-directed view. Here's Earth in the green, the stereo A and stereo B there in the red and the darker blue color. Uh, looks like we got a decent solar storm coming up here for tomorrow night. Let's take a look here at the latest forecast here for the auroras. Now, this is for tonight, not coming in tonight, but notice tomorrow night here uh, for Monday night. Looks like KP index around a 7 forecasted there. That's a pretty decent storm. There is the aurora possibilities out here, or at least the forecasted auroras. The view line could be down here across Oregon, maybe into Nebraska, Ohio, Illinois, and, of course, northward. If you got a clear sky out there tomorrow night, you're going to be able to see the, uh, hopefully be able to see the auroras. And it looks like a decent storm, solar storm that's coming in. Again, peak range is going to be perfect here for nighttime. UTC date of July 30th between 06 and 0900. So basically anytime uh, after dark tomorrow night, Monday night, got a decent chance. That's a uh, really good possibility there. I don't think we're going to see it in Northern California. We would have to have G4, G5 storming conditions similar to what we've seen out in uh, back in May of this year when we've seen that historic Aurora event take place. But uh, for now, if you're up in the northern tier states and even some of the lower latitude states there or the mid-latitude states, got a decent shot of seeing that uh, activity. So... Uh, as far as flaring goes, uh, obviously got uh, a couple sunspots here that are currently facing the Earth. Quite numerous, actually, and there's quite a few complex sunspots in here as well. Let's take a look here at the latest magnetogram image showing the complexity of these sunspots. Uh, got a uh, center-facing sunspot right here. It's actually a combination of a different number of sunspots, and uh, it's growing, getting complex here within this whole central region. Uh, back over here, this area is getting quite dynamic as well. It's growing in, in the uh, complexity stage. Beta gamma delta structure, I believe that still is. And uh, even this area. So uh, pretty much all of these sunspot regions that are currently facing the Earth are growing in uh, complexity. And that increases the chance there of seeing some stronger flares and more uh, possible CMEs in the Earth-directed view. Right now, the overall threat is elevated there for X flare 20% chance, C flare at 99% chance, and M flare 75% chance. Of course, with the X flare being the strongest possible flare uh, in the forecast. Proton event there around 15% chance as well. And uh, there's all our M flares here in the last 48 hours. Got uh, a number of them, including that M 9.9 near X flare from 3766 here. We'll continue to keep an eye on this. And, of course, uh, as I mentioned, tomorrow. Tomorrow night got a decent shot of seeing the auroras. Of course, we'll cover this a little bit later on this evening and also in the, uh, in the update tomorrow. Real quick glance here at the next five close approaches here for asteroids. Really not seeing anything of any noteworthy value. The closest one's going to be a 150-foot size air, airplane size asteroid coming in... Uh, just over 1 million miles from the Earth. That is a considerable safe distance there. Quite a few large asteroids, including this one. Goodness, 2,000-foot asteroid? That would not be good. Uh, well over 3 million miles here that's taken place today. So nothing on the menu that would cause any concern of, of right now. All right, uh, there's that little earthquake out around Augusta area in Maine, 28 uh, these little earthquakes, even though they're tiny, uh, they can be felt by a few folks out there. Looks like a few people reported feeling this earthquake uh, around the Augusta area, North Brunswick region as well. So 
So uh, a little bit of shaker going on out there. Really nothing big. Uh, as we head to the west here, things uh, appearing to calm down slightly across the oil fields of Texas and Oklahoma. Out here across the west coast of California. Uh, down here in the southern portion of the state, general microquake activity here today. Nothing major. Uh, the Bay Area, Northern California, a handful of smaller quakes throughout this area as well. Roughly uh, about the same as yesterday. Northern California here seeing a two-pointer there at the southern end of the Cascadia, 28 kilometers deep. Also getting some movement up here across the uh, ridges, the Gorda Ridges. Now that amplifies the strain out here against the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, we actually seen that 2.6 prior to this earthquake here. About an hour later, we've seen that 2.0, a little bit of increasing strain here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet, not a whole lot popping off there for now. Hawaii area, uh, some movement taking place here today around the Kilauea volcano, a little bit of migration pattern going on here across the uh, towards the middle rift zone here of Kilauea uh, let's go double check see what's going on here across the volcano hazards map real quick the volcano still at a yellow and advisory so really no changes there in the status of the volcano and the update here was put out today it looks like so let's see what the USGS is stating uh, the volcano is currently not erupting over the past 24 hours, there has been no reactivation of the July 22nd, 25th seismic swarm in the upper east rift zone. But that doesn't mean things have gone away. That means that uh, there's just the pressure had increased there during that time period. And now we're just waiting for a further push of maybe some further magma from below to increase and intensify uh, the risk of seeing an eruptive event there across the area. Uh, additional seismic pulses or swarms may occur with little or no warning and result in either an intrusion of magma or an eruption in lava. So uh, let's go check out the data here, see what we have for earthquake activity. I'm going to check the seismograph station down here because this is where we got a little bit of the uh, migration pattern going on here. Uh, there's definitely a handful of earthquakes no, looking nothing like what it did here a couple days ago when we had that intense and very intense earthquake swarm talking about uh, I'm sure they picked up a couple thousand earthquakes there in the last week or so so things are uh, at a lower elevated level right now I would say but uh, overall you know that magma just doesn't disappear it's down there it's pressurized a little bit uh, it's inflated about as much as it will inflate right now until we get another further push of some uh, further magma from below. Uh, the tilt meter over this area, I uh, meant to check the tilt meter. It's going to be this little red one. Shows uh, leveling off here. Here's the intrusion that took place from the summit to the upper east rift zone where we've seen that uh, major earthquake activity take place here. A lot of a lot of earthquakes in a short amount of time period. So this is leveled off. It's inflated at maximum level for right now. Uh, the summit area, let's see what we got here for the deformation data. Going up a little bit here, but this is the daily chart past two days. Uh, here's our loss of magma from the summit off to the east rift zone. Notice a huge drop here. Very noticeable on the past month as well. That's a considerable amount that was displaced there from the summit to the Upper East Rift Zone. And now we're just waiting. Just a, a waiting game here across this area. Uh, further out west here across the Mariana Trench. Got a couple smaller quakes out here today. Uh, looks like uh, some fours and even a 5.2 out here in the northern Mariana Islands area. Deeper quake up here across the Mog Islands. It's going to be uh, still in the northern end here of the uh, Mariana Trench. Some earthquake activity from last night there at the Kuro Kamachaka Trench. And a little bit of adjustment today off the coast of Japan. A 5.2 coming in there. So somewhat more active across the area today. 
Let's see what we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe real quick. There's that newer activity there in the uh, white color rings. Typical clustering going on here into the Indonesia Islands area. Solomon Islands still lacking any type of earthquake activity. Been watching that for a little while. You remember this whole area was a uh, absent zone for a little bit in terms of earthquake activity. It's filled in through Fiji into the Vanuatu area, but still lacking activity here. Roughly about Papua New Guinea through the Solomon Islands area. This area needs to adjust. It has not in a little while, so keep an eye on this region closely. Uh, New Zealand area looks like uh, they got a few more earthquakes overnight, mostly deeper quakes there into that area. Let's go check out the latest information here from the GeoNet servers, see what's going on down on this side of the world. A couple smaller twos out there across North Island. There's that 4.6 on the Bay of Plenty a couple days ago. Uh, let's include all these little magnitudes and see what's going on. 4.3 20 minutes ago, way up. Here along the Kermadec Trench, that's a pretty deep earthquake, 500 kilometers. Here's some of that smaller quake activity being noted there across the North Island region. 3.2 up along the Kermadec Trench again. Uh, some deeper activity underneath the North Island region, 134 kilometers for that two-pointer. Uh, so things are relatively uh, active here across the area. Not in terms of large-scale magnitudes, but multitude of quakes kicking up in the last 24 hours. A lot of these are not going to show up here on the map, but as you can see, some of them are. Uh, South Island area. This looks like earthquake activity, but very localized to this station here, the Quartz Range area. And a handful of smaller quakes down here, but really nothing big to report across the uh, New Zealand area for now. Let's see, South America, pancake activity going on here. Just got quake, quake upon quake being stacked here in this general area. This is um, this is where that seven-pointer struck here, I believe, just a couple days ago, roughly in that same area. Has it been over a week already? Goodness, time is just flying by. <laughs> I thought it was just literally a couple days ago. There's that seven pointer back on the 18th. Has it been 10 days? Goodness, 10 days there since that 7.4 in that area. So we're still seeing some adjustment going on there in this area, the Perucilli Trench, a lot of deeper activity. But if you look here, that's where that earthquake struck down there into the Perucilli Trench, 117 kilometers deep. So uh, common to see earthquake activity continue for that long in this area. The Puerto Rico area looks like some twos and threes being observed out here across the Puerto Rico Trench. And uh, let's see what we got up here in Alaska. Nothing really out of the norm. Just some twos and threes scattered out here across the Aleutian Trench up into the mainland here. Really nothing of major interest, though. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. One more three-pointer up here in Iceland. So let's go see. Let's go take a look up here and see how we're doing up there today for the Iceland activity. Uh, past 12 hours here, very minimal earthquake activity. Scattered out and about here across the rift zones. The Katla volcano down here still at a yellow. That last eruption there being observed 1918, but uh, due to the elevated melting here of the glacier, they've updated that status there to a yellow. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, the Savart Singhi area, Near Grindavik, the Blue Lagoon, and the power plant out here. Pretty quiet in terms of earthquake activity, but uh, we're getting up there in terms of inflation. Let me check out the uh, Savart Singhi area. General overall pattern here. Here's the vertical displacement. Uh, they've messed with these numbers here a little bit, but you can see the drop from our last eruption there back in the end of May. Uh, and now we're steadily going up here. It looks like we're at least on the Savart Singhi area, just matching what, or above the level. We're above the level previously seen there in this last eruption. So we've built up enough volume here for a soon to be continued eruption across the area, whether that's going to be there across the Hagafell, Slingerfell, or maybe even the Grindavik area. We'll have to see. 
how it plays out. Yeah, it looks like they've messed with these numbers a little bit. All right, uh, what else we got here today, folks? Anything going on in the thunderstorm department? Looks like a little bit of convective activity out here across the northern plains. 2% chance for tornado probability there in the green Norfolk area. We got uh, portions of Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa area. Heads up there. A little bit of uh, wind damage potential out there today as well from these thunderstorms and even some hail potential. So we continue to watch that. All right, folks. Have yourself a good day. Uh, the live seismograph stations here are off and on periodically. Uh, but most of the time they'll come back on. Uh, looks like some of the plate boundary stations are offline, the PB stations. But uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on things here. And, of course, we'll jump back in if anything major happens around the globe in terms of earthquake activity or any major space weather related events. We'll catch you guys back out here tonight. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. It's supposed to be about uh, a little bit warmer than yesterday here in California. Yesterday we hit 78, which was perfect. After hundred after days of 100 degree temperatures or higher. Today's supposed to be about 92, I think. So warm, but uh, you know, at least it's not up there around 110 or so. That's coming next week. We got a major high pressure that's gonna build in here and cook the West Coast once again. Have a good day. Catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. Take care.